So indeed, I will uh, be giving you my physicist perspective to this quantum game champs. So let me briefly tell you something about myself and my background and then about and also about slightly about the research and then I'll tell you about my experiences with these events. So like Daria mentioned, uh, I studied in Turku, where I got my bachelor's and master's in the laboratory of theoretical physics, uh, which started uh, doing this game, quantum game jam events in collaboration with the Finnish game jam organization. And after my master's in 2017, I continued also to do my PhD in theoretical physics, also in Turku, which I just got. Uh, finished last summer. So after my PhD, I moved here in Slovakia to do postdoctoral research at Slovak Academy of Sciences, uh, which I continued uh, to work here as a Marie Curie Fellow here at the Slovak Academy of Sciences as well. So scientific experience and research in interests lie in mostly in foundations of quantum theory and quantum information theory. So as you, you all know, quantum theory uh, is the theory that governs the physics of all these uh, small particles, atoms, molecules, and such on. And the main application of this uh, theory is now in this quantum information and quantum technologies. But most, uh, most importantly, I'm also interested in these questions, these foundational questions about quantum theory. I will uh, briefly explain what I mean. By this in the next slide. But so my experience include I uh, have non published papers as well as I have several contributor talks and posters in several conferences and done multiple research visits all over the world. So, what does a researcher in quantum foundations do? So, I'll give you a brief a list of kind of broad research questions. Uh, one of which could be like, what makes quantum theory unique? So we know that quantum theory uh, describes extremely well and in accordance with experiments, uh, all, all this uh, physics related to uh, the small particles and atoms, but what makes quantum theory uh, uniquely quantum or what is quantum about quantum theory? These are kind of the foundational questions that what one might ask. And also, another kind of question could be what are the physical principles behind quantum theory? So we know this mathematical structure of quantum theory well. We don't necessarily know all that well what are the physical principles leading to these mathematical structures. Then on the other hand, we can look at what is possible or impossible in quantum theory and what are the limits of quantum theory. So we can explore what can be done and can be done, for example, in quantum information processing and quantum technologies. And the personal goal of mine is to understand as much of the non-classical features of quantum theory as possible, because it's this non-classicality that, that sort of uh, blurs our intuition from understanding the quantum features, because we're used to this everyday world, which is described by, by classical physics. Okay, so that's about me and my research, then let's move on to my experience and why I'm talking to you today here. So I think the main reason why I'm, I'm talking to you today is because I was the leading actor in this Quantum Game Jam 2016 team option presentation film. Well, no, but that was a that was the start for me in this Quantum Game Jam path. So as I mentioned, so the University of Laboratory Physics in University of Turku started doing these events and my first one, which I participated was in 2016. Then I went also participated in the following year 2017. And so far my last one was in 2019. So I will briefly tell you uh, about each of these events and what, I, what was my role in these events and the games we did. So in 2016, I was a part of team that made this game quantum pilot and this is a 2d platformer that demonstrates the features of quantum gates so quantum gates are something that we use in a quantum computer uh, to manipulate the quantum bits or qubits so the quantum information just like in classical computers you have classical gates that are uh, or these logical gates that 
manipulate the information inside computers. And what we have here is this quantum pilot traveling through space, uh, and he faces different kind of objects. So he has a health bar. This quantum pilot, which is actually described by this quantum bit qubit, and these objects actually uh, correspond to different kind of quantum gates. And these gates, quantum gates, have different kind of action on the qubit, so the health. And of course, the quantum pilot wants to live, so his uh, target is to stay uh, alive as long as possible by uh, using this action of the gate. So when you play this game, you build an intuition of what these gates does to a qubit, so to your health. My role in this game was, uh, I, was I was one of the physicists in this team, so we wanted to really demonstrate and teach people about this uh, or give intuition about these quantum gates. It actually it ended up that our programmer left after the first evening and then never came back. So I also had to take a huge role in this programming part as well. So one for you is to don't lose sight of your programmer if you got, got one. And here's the full team of people, uh, not including the original pro programmer, of course. So the second one, 2017, continues on the same kind of team that we want to demonstrate or uh, teach some kind of quantum phenomena. And the game that we did in this year was called Polar Opposite. So in this game, uh, okay, in this artistic vision, you see we have a we have a character a pig who's confined in a slaughterhouse and trying to escape. And uh, the twist is this game is that you can so this is a two D platformer. So you're moving up and down these platforms, and <clears throat> uh, the twist in this game is that you can actually move. So you can uh, only use this character. To move up these platforms when you're not seeing him. So you have an action that you you're basically invisible when you're moving, but you have an action to make your character visible because it's hard to move the character if you cannot see him. Uh, so you can make him visible, but then everything freezes in the game. And this is exactly because of the quantum, what is meant to demonstrate this quantum Zeno effect. The quantum Zeno effect means that if you're observing some quantum system continuously and frequently, you're essentially slowing down or freezing its evolution. So we have this quantum big peak, and if you're not observing him, he's free to go through these levels. And when we measure him or observe him continuously, he freezes and everything in the dynamics freezes. And when we stop observing again, we can uh, go and uh, go up the levels again. Uh, and also for this game, actually, most of us were physicists in this game, but we will also uh, we have we each took part of this program in task as well. And then we have a, had a graphical artist as well. So let me show you one difference here. That uh, what is the difference between game made by physicist and then when you add the graphical artist? So our first uh, version of the game was this kind of uh, boring. Basically, we, we thought it as an electron going up through these energy levels, but with our graphical artists, we managed to get the storyline of this big escaping the slaughterhouse. So uh, I think it's important to uh, really take advantage of these events where you have people from different fields in game development and make it not only about the physics, but also interesting story-wise and also graphically pleasing. So in this 2019 uh, Quantum Wheel event, uh, the game that we made actually with our next speaker was this, and he uh, is this Qubit the Barbarian game. <clears throat> so this is 2D this kind of maze game, which it teaches you about randomness of quantum measurement. So this uh, qubit barbarian is stuck in this quantum maze where you, uh, the walls are actually qubits, uh, which can be even a real qubit in a, this IBM quantum computer. I think the, uh, uh, well, the easily accessible uh, version of this game uses simulation, but they're essentially qubits for which you are making measurements. And you have different uh, 
you have qubits in different spin directions, let's say, and you make you can make these measurements in different spin directions. If you make a measurement on the correct spin direction, uh, you open up a path in the maze. If you uh, make a, a measurement in the wrong direction, it's determined randomly whether a path opens or not. So this is to demonstrate this uh, fundamental, like probabilistic nature of quantum measurements. You also have different other uh, objects here, like food and monsters, where this quantum randomness come into play. So you might get a different amount of energy from the food, and you have different probabilities of hitting these enemies. And the role, I, I got off lightly for this one, as my role was strictly in this physics part of the game. And I think it came up nicely. And it, this game, uh, we had a really great group of people and I think it shows in the end product when you have real professionals working on that you can make a actually really uh, enjoyable and uh, well working game in the end even in 48 hours. I think that's also a topic that uh, Henry uh, wants to discuss in his talk next. But so overall to conclude my perspective as a physicist in this event is so our games uh, mostly focused on uh, trying to teach or give intuition to these different kind of quantum features that you have and that are might be counterintuitive to begin with. And you can build these kind of games uh, to make it easier to understand or even get interested and learn more about these things. So thank you. That's all for me.